In this wildlife photography Lightroom tutorial, I'm going to show you the full edit on this photograph of a leopard, achieving this final result. Stick around until later in the video where I show you exactly how I sharpen my wildlife photographs. Let's jump right in. So to start with, I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. And you'll see as soon as I change to Adobe Standard, the contrast levels will drop. The background is very dark and the leopard illuminated by the spotlight is very bright. So I want to even out that contrast with this image. But to start with, I will go down to detail and remove the sharpening for now. Make sure luminance noise reduction is at zero. And then I'm going to click on remove chromatic aberration here on the lens corrections. I do that with every image when I start. So to start evening out this exposure, I'm going to drop the exposure slightly just to bring the leopard into a better range of brightness. And I will probably drop this highlight slider a little bit here and then raise up the shadows. So you can see that's already evening out that contrast a bit there, especially on the leopard. And I'm going to raise the blacks. Now that will bring out a lot of detail in that blue background there. And I think the color is looking pretty good. I'm going to actually drop the saturation slightly just to even out a little bit more of that color and Basically what I've done there is I've dropped that saturation to drop the blue mainly and then in the HSL panel I'll bring back color of this leopard. I'm basically just trying to drop down the contrast and the brightness on that sky. I think before we get into some color work I just want to even out the exposure. The face here is very bright so I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to place a radial gradient onto this very bright section of this mouth here. And then I will drop the highlights a little bit there. So you can see that's evened out that exposure on the face very nicely. And then I think in a more general area, I'm going to place a bigger radial gradient over this area of the leopard here. And a neat trick with this is if you have an image with very contrasting colors, you can actually use the color range mask to remove or add a certain color. So now you can see I've created this radial gradient, but now I've gone over the leopard and into the blue background there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click subtract select color range and I'm going to click on the blue area right next to the fur there and you'll see that'll disappear from the selection. So that's really targeting the area that I want now. So I'm going to drop the exposure down a little bit there, something like that. So now I'm going to move into some color work. I'm going to go into the HSL panel and I want to adjust the sky very slightly. It's a little bit purple. So I'm going to click and drag by, if you click on this little icon here, you can go over your image and then click and drag and you'll see it'll adjust the sliders there. So you don't have to do that manually. You can actually click and drag and it will target the color perfectly. So I'd say something around about there, very subtle change. And then the leopard, I'm going to adjust the orange and the yellow. Now that color on the leopard will be made up of orange and yellow. I'm just going to move that down manually, something around about there. Maybe this blue is a little bit too much. And then going into saturation, I'll see what the slider does to the leopard. Maybe a little bit of a bump there. And then I want to desaturate that sky just slightly, just to bring more emphasis onto the leopard. And then what I might do is play with the luminance on the blue, just to bring that exposure up slightly as well. And that's looking pretty good. So you can see with that HSL panel there, we've changed the color quite a bit and made it a lot more pleasing there. Now I want to bring up the exposure on the leopard and the tree a little bit more. I'm fairly happy where the sky is in terms of brightness and contrast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mask, create mask, and then I'm going to use objects. Now what you can do is you can actually click and drag over your image, a rough sort of area of what you want to be selected and then Lightroom and the clever software will detect that object. So I'm selecting the leopard and the tree because I want to brighten that whole section and probably add a little bit of clarity as well. Just to let that section pop out quite a bit more. Something like that, small adjustments on the exposure and a little bump in clarity and maybe a little bit of saturation as well, just a little bit. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is go into the effects panel. I'm going to add a slight vignette just to emphasize that leopard a little bit more there. Something around about there. The midpoints I'm going to drop. Another tip, if you hold down Alt while you do these sliders, it'll give you a 100% preview of that vignette. So it's a lot easier to see what you're doing. And then raise this highlight slider up. 
something around about there not too much but you can just see it emphasizes the subject nicely and then i will come back into the main basic panel and i just want to tweak the colors a bit so i want to increase the saturation a little bit more i like what it's doing on the leopard but i think the sky is getting a little bit too saturated again so i'm going to go into hsl and drop that down that's looking pretty good that's a before and an after you can see we've controlled that contrast a lot and i might increase this vignette a little bit more something around about there so before we go into the denoise and the sharpening i'm going to crop the image i want to get rid of a little bit of the right hand side area here maybe just crop in a little bit tighter and maybe add in a little bit more vignetting so really emphasize that leopard a little bit more there okay so before sharpening i like to denoise my image and we will use the denoise ai in lightroom so that's very simple to do you just click this denoise here in the detail tab and i generally use a value of about 50 here and i always click this create stack because that will put the enhanced raw file with the original raw file and i will click enhance to run the ai denoise and then it will spit out a dng file for me to edit further okay so for wildlife sharpening i always do this kind of workflow so i put my amount to 150 and then i will hold down the alt button on this masking tab and i will increase that slider until the majority of the out of focus non-detail areas are black so you can see around about there it varies between image to image so somewhere around 50 or so is good the radius i always well, I say always 99% of the time, I keep it down to 0.5. I find the higher radius, it looks a little bit too crunchy. And then the detail, I keep that very low at a value of about 20. If you increase that, it starts introducing a lot of strange artifacts. So I keep that at 20. And then I take the amount down back to zero. And then I slowly bring it up to an area where I feel like the sharpening is doing a good enough job, where it's not over sharpened. I've gone away for a couple of minutes and I've just looked back at the image. There's a few bits I want to tweak. I'm just going to increase the exposure a little bit and I want to change the color of the leopard slightly. I feel like it's a little bit too red as well as probably the sky. I think the sky, I'm just going to change the hue slightly. And then I want to zoom in on the eyes here. I want to increase the exposure on the eyes. I feel like they've become a little bit flat compared to the initial raw file. So I'm just going to do a small mask on the eyes there and increase the exposure and then add in a little bit of clarity as well. That's looking pretty good. And then I think the last thing I'm going to do is going to drop the saturation slightly and then increase a little bit of the detail on the clarity there and then increase some of the whites, holding down the Alt button that allows you to see if anything has been clipped. So I think that's looking pretty good. I might just tweak the white balance and a little bit of that contrast there. So this is the raw file that we started out with and this is the final result. If you found value in this Lightroom tutorial, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And if you want to see another full Lightroom tutorial, check out this video next where I edit this line image in Lightroom.